Yeah, we're not monetized. We're not monetized. It wouldn't, it wouldn't cost us anything. Are you serious? Yeah. So should I just play it? Play it. We're live right now. They're waiting. People are going. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Hold on a second, folks. Oh, now I messed up. We had we had some music. <laughs> when I totally lost it. Oh, we'll no. come. We'll come back to it. We'll definitely come back to it. Oh wait. I uh, no. Uh, oh, look, oh. Hey, look for oh. it, and I'll go through a quick roll call while you're looking for it of everybody that's here, and welcome everybody here for the Campbelltown Festival release. Now, this will be a quick one for Tom and I tonight. We have one bottle to preview for you all. It's a, our small batch rare release for the Campbelltown Festival. There are no single casks for Campbelltown this year. And uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. But let's go through a quick roll call, see who all's tuning in. A lot of people commenting before we even went live. James DeGilio, Zach Chastain, Northwoods Whiskey Nerds, Robert G, Dale Barbu, Edward C, Castillo Montoya, Paul Cleveland, John Colleen, Dale Barbu, I said, Whiskey Chicken, Warren Buff, Daniel Duggar, Steward of Butte, uh, E. Pluribus Newman, Big Ed, yeah. Randall Borkus. Randall was in one of my lives the other day. Uh, that we did with uh, people that signed up for the uh, virtual drams. Robert G is here, but Bill Monteith, Adam Clary, Duke McHale, talked to Duke on the phone today, Joe Combs the second, Seth Landisman. Uh, not just skipped on me. Important Whiskies is here. That's good. Like to see Important Whiskies tuning in. Fine yeah. Spirits Appreciation Society. We have an important whiskey this evening. That's right. Vortex 1988, Too Slow, Daniel H., I think I said maybe, maybe not, Jason Seiler, uh, Calum Redmayne from Seattle, Calum. checking in. I met, I met Calum at the uh, at the tasting panel experience. Did you? Nice. Fine young fellow, yes. Hell of a palate. Uh, Badrenath T., Pam Longville says, hi, everyone. Fine Spirits Appreciation Society. Big Dog is here. G Cap, George Kaplan, Mark Hughes. Now we've gone through quite a list. A lot of people tuning in. Welcome, everybody, again. Did you find the music now? I did. Yes, let's hear it. You hear that all right? Nice. I would play this uh, towards the end of a Burns night. And, um, you know, I wasn't sure if we were allowed to play it. But pretty uh, pretty on, on point for tonight. Yeah, you bet. No, the only time uh, music will uh, will hit you with something is if you're monetized and you're trying to make money off of it. We're not monetized, so we can play it. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed that. That's Campbellton Loch um, by, uh, I believe it's Andy Stewart. Um, yeah, Andy Stewart. Uh, kind of an old old school uh, Scottish uh, Scottish performer. So uh, yeah, it's a good good intro to what we're doing. Im important, nice. Yeah, important whiskey says please dance on every one of these previews going forward. <laughs> well, so there could be some dancing Wednesday night. We'll be previewing the uh, Isla 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 Festival releases two bottles, and we've got the whole team's going to be there together. So that's right. Yeah, be a good time. Awesome. Yeah. I can't, I can't believe it's another like festival season already. Yeah. Like, last year like flew, but anyway, yeah, it, it's, it's been a lot of fun. We've, we've had a few releases. You, you've done an in, incredible job, Scott. Oh, thank you. Uh, in, thank you. in releasing uh, the, the first few um, on YouTube. And uh, so thank you very much for, for all you're doing to spread the good word virtually. Um, I actually had an awesome event in New York this past Saturday afternoon. Um, while temperatures soared to 90 degrees in New York City and the surrounding area, we dipped into the very well air conditioned Brandy Library for a two hour tasting of our um, different festival bottlings. So <clears throat> all six were were on uh, on feature. And um, so folks got to kind of review the first three we've released and preview tonight's selection and, and also the, the selections we'll go over on Wednesday evening. So um, yeah, that, that was really good. I was very, very impressed with all of these whiskeys. 
Um, distillery number five was probably the biggest surprise. I did not expect it to have that complexity mm-hmm. or that kind of weight for something that's triple distilled. Um, but that's what I'm. That's what I'm warming up my palate with tonight. Very good. Yeah, I mean that's uh, uh, that that was that was really impressive. From the distillery nineteen, I. I kind of surmised that it was going to be a nice big mouthful of like waxy texture. Mm. And it was for Mm -hmm. sure. And following that kind of bright, fragrant fruit forward distillery five, the 19 really showed off its, its earthy kind of gravitas. So I thought that was awesome. And then, and then going to the 36 with a, a very deftly applied, uh, you know, thin veil of sherry, um, really, really gorgeous. You yeah, know? not too heavy-handed. Um, right. Really, kind of butterscotchy and, and delicious. I mean, you and Jenna did a wonderful job reviewing that and the other kind of core offerings we, we put together with it. Mm-hmm. But those those were fantastic. And then I kind of got talking a little bit and <laughs> rushed through the last three before they were closing up. Um, but uh, so I'm really excited to revisit distillery 93 gotcha um, tonight so yeah. it, it was really cool so that's that's what's happened what's what's to come obviously tonight wednesday night we we kind of button up festival month with the two biggest releases or at least most most anticipated i guess we'll say um and then uh everyone has a lovely memorial day weekend hopefully many of you are are already in scotland getting ready for Campbelltown Malts Festival starting this Wednesday and then um, an Isla Festival shortly thereafter. Uh, and then after uh, after the Memorial Day break, we come back and, and we have the outturn previews starting in Sunday on Sunday in D.C. and Atlanta. I will be in D.C. I will be bringing a bunch of whiskey with me. So if you're in that area and you haven't signed up yet, please come uh, please come out, hang out with uh, with me and the gang at Jack Rose. And uh, and then in in uh, Monday we'll we'll be in what like five different cities I think around the country. I'll be in New York. Uh, Jenna will be in um, where will Jenna be? I don't recall. I think she's doing Atlanta is all on Sunday. This Atlanta week. on Sunday, and then she has Monday off. Lovely, yeah. good for her. She deserves. So. Um, yeah, Zach will right. be in San Diego and and also Los Angeles. We'll have uh, Brian McCoy in Seattle, um, and uh, uh, I'll be in New York. So yeah, so so for those of you who have not signed up yet and, and are available, come join us. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, June is is a Father's Day month, so we like to show some pretty fun whiskeys. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, Warren Buffs already asking any chance the SMWS makes this a one bottle per li- one a limit one bottle so that more of us get a shot at it. No, this night. Nice. This this whiskey, yeah, ninety distillery ninety three will be the two bottles. What we've done with the other, yeah, Warren, we're gonna give you two bottles if you want, just to help out on shipping a bit. So you could just order those two bottles and pull the trigger and not have to worry too much about uh, about that shipping cost. So uh, so it's, it'll be a two bottle limit. We're looking at about two hundred and sixty five bottles. So uh, you know, I, I, so far nothing has sold out immediately. So I think you should be okay. You, you know, it'll be. It'll be published at, at 1 p.m. tomorrow Eastern time. So as long as you're by your computer then, um, I think you should be okay. Yeah, um, we're getting distillery 36, I think, is the lowest. We're down to, I think, 28 or so on those now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's going. But uh, I think all the others are still well in hand. And this one, I don't, I don't expect this one to go within the hour, but uh, we'll see. It, won't, it probably won't last the day. Oh, you don't think? I don't think so. So be quick. Still be quick. Historically, get, get historically, the Campbelltown release has been, you know, well, well attended, so to speak. Yeah. So, good. Good. Yeah. All right. So here we go. If you don't know, and I think a lot of people know, they've been cheating and uh, reading ahead through the UK website, who already put out uh, and have previewed all of their whiskeys already. And of course, ours are mirroring uh, the UK releases, but this is eight year old. Distillery 93 rare release. Changes faster than a chameleon is the name. 59.7% ABV. First fill uh, bourbon barrels is our cask type on this one. And a lot of you saw oily and coastal. 
So an unpeated distillery 93. Yeah. Ooh. And a nice oily and coastal nose. So, sea time, sea yeah. time, maritime. Yeah. Lemongrass. Vanillas. Oh, that lemongrass is really sticking. It's yeah. very fresh. Ooh, man. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I mean, that's that's oily and coastal, man. I mean, that's that's awesome. And no peat, no peat at all. But yep. wow, just fresh seaside brightiness, salinity, and very bright. Very, very bright. Yeah, it is. Yeah, surprisingly. <sighs> yeah. Look, these guys, these guys make fantastic whiskeys. They do. You know, they do. They, they really, really do. I know that some of their neighbors get a lot of the critical acclaim. But boy, for for my money, these uh, these whiskeys are really fantastic. A little bit, little bit of spiciness. I say I, I call that a, a cracked black pepper. Not much. A little bit in there with the vanillas, the oak, that lemon yep. grass, sea salt, the sea salt caramel. Actually, I would say the sea salt caramel for sure. The, the sweetness is starting to come through. A little bit, a little bit of key lime pie, lime zest. For a nice light citrus. Whew. This feels like one of those you could probably sit down with and before you even taste it, just nose it for an hour. And just well, drink. yeah, that's kind of you know where the where the tasting panel was coming from with the with the title. Uh -huh. You know, it's definitely giving you these, these these different experiences with each approach. Yeah. Changes faster than a chameleon. Wow. And I got to tell you, honestly, I think Distillery 93 for me is really for the Campbelltown region is at the top. I've Man, you, know, you can almost smell the texture on it. Yeah. You can kind of smell that weight, you know? Oh. You know, when you said that, it just kind of reminded me of smelling like um, cedar paneling, like you were in a room lined with, yeah, yeah. with oak and cedar paneling. Well, wow, you're spot on, Scott. You're, I'm, I'm picking up everything you're laying down tonight. Huh. That's really good. I mean, I don't, I don't, I can't add much. I mean, you, you're you're hitting on a lot of things. Yeah. Getting much fruit? I mean, there isn't a whole lot of fruit. There is that whiff of citrus you're talking about, right? I guess yeah. Behind the spice, behind the confection, the, 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 behind that salted caramel, there's a touch of like almost like a red apple like a like a, a very ripe red apple character I, I got i'm reaching for it yeah i can see it red delicious apples yeah Ooh. again like i say the nose just keeps yeah just keeps giving and what's that abv what, what is that 59 okay just shy of 60. I mean, it's it's a pretty forgiving nose for that for that level of uh, alcohol. Yeah. I'll be interested to add a little bit of water to this, though. See how the uh, see how the palate, or excuse yeah. me, how the aromas change. Rather, right. I think the salt is bringing this one out. This is a little bit of a different note. Yeah, martini olives with Ooh, the um, okay with the yeah. uh, um, the red um, filling. What's it called? Pimento, pimento, pimento feeling. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, as I keep going back, yes, that saltiness is really is really coming up. Yeah, it could be a little bit of the saltiness and almost like an olive oil slash making that all of that that martini olive and the pimento. Can Ooh, we taste? Very nice. Let's go. Let's Can do we taste. It. All right. Cheers. Slonja. Mmm. Mm. Ooh, she's spicy at first, huh? Wow. Spicy vanilla custard. Mm. Oaks. 
Nice. Well, I see that Bill Monte says it's interesting. We're not getting any sweet notes. No, we are getting some on the nose. We're lighter, sweeter, citrus. Got some lime in there. Oh, no, there's plenty. Yeah, you, you touched on it earlier with the vanilla, kind of a vanilla custard. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it's definitely there. And then that caramel, that salted caramel. Yes, it's salted, but it still has that core of kind of caramel sweetness to it on the nose. Give that a second. That's still going across the finish on my palate. I'm going to get a second sip of that one in. A little bit of a floral note. Some uh, You're standing by the ocean in a field of flowers, getting all that maritime sea, sea air saltiness. Yep. A bit of cereal on the mid palate, like a, a, a fairly malty hit. Um, almost a little, a bit of, a bit of like brittle, like a nutty brittle, mm. um, mm -hmm. and chili. I mean, I'm getting more kind of chili spice on the finish than, um, than a black pepper. The, the pepper on the nose, I, I, I got quite a bit on the palate. It's, it's a bit more, almost like a, a cooling, like kind of Sichuan. I mean, yeah, a very light. I can see that. You know, a light expression of that. I mean, it's yeah. not as intense as a a Szechuan pepper. Yeah, I can see that though. Definitely, chili spice and stuff, especially on the tail end of it. And even after I swallow, it's still sitting there burning a little bit. Not the alcohol, but that that Szechuan chili yeah. pepper spice. Yeah, right back of the palate and down the throat. Yeah, it's it's almost a a bit of numbing there. You know. That's a very cooling kind of spice, yeah. William Buchanan, how does it compare with 3 a.m. Donner kebab? And I don't, I never had that one. So I don't like 93124, I believe. And I'm I'm sorry to say that I, I haven't had it either. So that was that was something that got lost in the uh, annals of of a, of a rework. <laughs> it, was, it should have been released in, in 2019. It was released in, in 2021. Um, and uh, so, so so few bottles of it came over that we didn't take any for ourselves. Um, so perhaps if another um, another member out there has had the Donner Kebab, may, maybe you could uh, maybe you can enlighten us. Um, but yes, believe it or not, we don't we don't see we don't taste every single thing that comes through. Right. Um, uh, quite, quite a few of them, but not, mm -hmm. not everything. So, uh, Bill Monteith is asking, uh, he's down in Oklahoma city. Is there any chance of me pushing for a Midwest tasting event for those of us in middle America? I hope to graduate up to that. Um, it's something to work on still settling into my role and, and getting the YouTube thing going. And that's really one of the, um, issues right now with me doing tastings at outturn preview tasting time is I'm doing the YouTube outturn preview tasting. So it's like, when, when would that happen if it does? So hopefully that's something though, down the road we can look at and see, cause I know it's come up a couple of times. I've had a member in, in uh, Dallas and Houston both ask kind of the same question. So I'd say hopefully in the future, that's something we can definitely take a look at. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there are some obstacles there, but uh, yeah, certainly not, uh, certainly not impossible. So, all right. I added a drop of water to mine. Haven't tasted it yet. I'm going to go in here. So I'm actually going to fortify my supply here <laughs> before I add my drops. Mm. Mm hmm. This is going to surprise a lot of people. Water is helping this one. I'm getting more lemongrass, lemon custard, lemon pie feeling, filling, filling, bringing out more of the citrus notes overall, a little bit of pear, some of your apples that you were getting before. It is, it is uh, accentuating the fruity characteristics of it. I, I'm, I'm not quite so citrus oriented as you are, but yeah, I mean, I see a lot of that. The lemongrass really pops. Yeah. Very fragrant, very, very pronounced uh, part of this. 
Let's profile. see, J Jason Mash and Drum is tuning in. What's going on, Jason? KLT223 is, is Kim Michael. She was at your tasting. She commented earlier. Uh, Kim, yeah, sure. Yeah. It was great to meet her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Northwood. That's going to become, I need that a t shirt with that on there, don't I? Northwoods whiskey nerds. Water not hurting this one at all. <laughs> I say that a lot with our whiskeys. <laughs> of course, it's true. I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. I want to say hello to Greg Cloyd, who's uh, tuning in from Ohio. Greg, how you doing, sir? Good to see you. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> virtually. See you virtually. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That really sweetens it up, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Really, all those fruits, I think, are expanding themselves now. Yeah. Really able to reach out there and grab you. Still nice saltiness, nice oak. Still that maritime feel is there. Just more citrus. Yeah. Oh, that's that's really really nice. There's more more minerality coming out on the nose along with the fruits. Ooh, it's like kind of like a toasted marshmallow kind of character. I think even the finish is helping on. And this really, you know, again, this is an eight year old whiskey, and some people may think that's pretty young. And I suppose overall, it is it is young, but this does not taste like an eight-year-old whiskey and blind never would I think it is and also I got to hand no. it to the UK tasting panel as well if they didn't think this was ready for release it's, it's not getting released you know point blank right it's also it's it's an interesting approach because these are these are vatted you know casks for for the festivals which is a new brand new approach for the society with regards to the festivals. And, um, you know, I had members ask me, you know, what do you think? Um, and, and of course, obviously it's, it's a new approach for us and new might, might always be a, a little different and sometimes not at least at first welcome to some members, but the way I see it, um, and, and, you know, what I told those members on, on Saturday was that, you know, it, you can very easily take a cask and put it in bottle a single cask and just send it out there. You know, here Ewan is kind of stepping it up a bit and he's putting himself and the society out there a bit more by doing these, these um, assemblages mm -hmm. as you now, you know, you're taking several casks and you, you have this idea in mind as to what you want this expression to look to taste like, but you know, can you deliver it? And, and I think he's delivered it every single one of these um, really beautifully. So there's a bit more artistry involved in, in blending these casks together for, for a global appeal. And that's the other really cool thing about it is everybody around the world is drinking this same exact whiskey, you know? Right. It, it's not yeah. like we got, it's not like the U.S. got one cask and, and the U.K. Right. got another and Australia got a different one. We're all drinking this, this same liquid. And uh, hopefully, eventually, we'll, we'll have... a, a a global tasting mm -hmm. of some sort. I mean, it might mean some of us are sipping whiskey at 6 a.m., but <laughs> worst, worst things have happened to your work week, you know? Yeah. Not that there's <laughs> anything wrong with that. Yeah. And, um, and, and you know, the, and, and the response I got from, from a lot of members w was very, very positive. You know, mm -hmm. at least they weren't, they didn't tell me anything negative about it. So that's great. Um, yeah. It's great to hear. No, and I've talked to several <laughs> members on the phone about it, and uh, nobody's had a bad word to say about it at all. Everybody's appreciated it and, and really yeah. liked yeah. that fact. Yeah. And the fact that, you know, you, you're, we're not going to run out in 30, 30 minutes, you know. Yeah. That's, yeah. That, that, that takes a little bit of pressure off everybody. So so that's yeah. nice, too. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, you, you have this question. What do we have? Yeah. Any word on when we can expect results? From the tasting panel experience. Um, I mean, I know the results. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to tell you what they are? Not quite yet. We're, yeah. we're, you're not going to see those casks until probably October, November, December of this year. So ask me again in September and I might tell you. 
So here's what you do, Tom. You keep your finger on the mute button and then you go like this. You go, oh, yeah, exactly. So what's going to happen is. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go, did you, hopefully that came across. That was amazing. Now, did you actually keep speaking or you just. Because you're a professional. It was, it was very weird. I actually, I found myself like not speaking, but like kind of whispering and like, yeah, right. it's different. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I do know, I, I think that uh, recalling how Seattle, where, where Callum is based, voted, I think, um, I think they're going to be very happy with the results. So, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Those are, those are months away. Right now we're in festival season. So we'll, uh, we'll focus on these guys. And Kim commented at the tasting, she got a distinct funk on this one. I don't, I'm not getting a funk after I, after I, after I saw your comment, Kim, I thought about it and about the funkiest thing I might note is maybe a seaweed. Once I got to searching what would be funky in here, maybe there's a little bit of a seaweed note, not real prevalent. I wouldn't say it's distinct. No, it's certainly a, a very light accent, if, if anything. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's hard to find something really super funky. And, and I mean, some of, some, of the, some of the distillate coming, coming out of this distillery is, can be very funky. But these are, I think, fairly fresh, albeit savory and very uh, kind of maritime oriented. Um, they're seaweed, maybe, yeah, mm -hmm. maybe, um, yeah. something like that, something like that. Uh, at least vegetation very close to the ocean, if not from the ocean. Um, you know that that kind of benefits from that salinity. Well, and I, I put in a second round of water here. It was too much. I definitely like this neat and or with. Uh, well, I did prefer it with one round of water or one drop of water compared to neat. But two drops was a brought it down a little bit too far for me. It could just be where I got it, but definitely a lot more after I, water did help it though. I think it brought out a lot more of that citrus and stuff right off the bat. And it was still there. I think it helped the finish, helped the palate overall. Yeah. Woo. Delicious stuff. Yeah. Very nice. Not a not a bad release at all. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um so yeah, I, I think it's I think it's always fun to see oily and coastal whiskeys that are that are unpeated. Um, I think that these can be some of the most complex out there, whether they're actually from the coast or, or from from the mainland. So you know, uh, this this is right in my wheelhouse for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel H says, I just wish this bottle would last till Thursday at one so I could get it and the Isla at the same time. Oh, well, hold these bottles, please, at purchase tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can place your order. Uh, if you place it online, there's a comment section uh, for you. When you place your order, you can say, please hold for future orders and we'll hold it. We'll combine shipping once you place your future order. Or if you call in, let us know, hey, I'd like to hold this and uh, ship it with a future order. We'll do that. Now, I do tell people, though, we are not we don't like to hold them for really more than a month. Uh, we'll, we'll get a nasty email from Brianna, who see, oversees all of the shipping and handling. And kudos to her, because I don't know how she does it. But... If we if we sit on them for more than a month, uh, you're gonna you're gonna get a nasty email from Brianna saying, "Hey, it's time we need to ship these out." So keep that in mind. If you're gonna order though within you know a week or two, by all means, we'll hold it and combine shipping and reduce those shipping charges a little bit. No, wait, hold on a second. So, so we got Nick Bishop here. Eight twenty six. I'm sold. Eight twenty eight. Way to talk me out of buying it, fellas. So what did we say in two minutes? Um, you know, I, I'm not very good at YouTube, so may, maybe it was something I said. I'm, I'm not sure. But, uh, <laughs> uh, a a two-minute uh, casual downsell. So, I mean, that's, that, you know, it's pretty it gifted. Two, it might have been the two rounds of water. I don't know. <laughs> ah, well, in any case, this is uh, this is great stuff. I mean, a wonderful distillery. They're very versatile. They're, they're doing uh, unpeated, medium peated, and fully peated. Uh, whiskeys and uh, and 
you know, the, the, the range that we get from them specifically is, is really quite something. So it's the, it's the funk. Nick was looking for the funk and we said we weren't necessarily getting it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's all individual palettes, though. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. But um, just very like good. The tasting panel comes up with some pretty ingenious, I would say, tasting notes. Sometimes, sometimes I get it. Sometimes I don't. Have you have you been reading the tasting notes? Oh yeah. Uh huh. So are we going to read this one? Uh, well, it's not on the bottle. That's the problem with the festival bottles. They don't put it on there. Do you want me to go through? I have it here. You, you, you got want it? me to read it? You betcha. Okay, so Distillery 93 Rare Release. <clears throat> a fascinating aroma awaited us. Each time we went back, it changed. To mention just a few, aniseed, Himalayan sea, sea salt, lemongrass essential oil, seaside swimming pool, Marie Rose sauce, and extra virgin rapeseed oil. The taste that ranged from cough mixture over salted caramel lime chocolate to crispy squid and prawns in a sweet chili sauce. Yeah. I'll just pause. Oh, there you go. That for a second. Yeah. The addition of water released the scent of cranberry pistachio white chocolate bark with sea salt, as well as arugula salad with olive oil, lemon, and Parmesan cheese. Before on the palate, yet again, multifarious flavors of green tea, herbal liqueur, which I'm totally getting on the finish now, like a chartreuse, um, mm. vegetable tempura with soy dipping sauce, and freshly foraged sea greens. Yeah. Pretty good. We touched yeah. on a lot of this stuff. A lot of it, yeah. You you touched but, on it specifically, Scott. Well, well done. I, say, I think it's grapeseed oil. I think there's a typo in that. I did see that. I don't know about that. The, r rapeseed oil is, is is a, I mean. Oh, is it? Is that it a is, thing? Yes. I never heard of rapeseed oil. It's a, it's a, I figured. It's a particular oil. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yes. Could be. Anyway, I that's, went, your, I that's, your, uh, that's your tasting note, which is pretty <laughs> touches on a lot of different uh, a lot of different things. Which one was I'm looking for somebody? Oh, uh, Nick was wanting uh, funk. Oh, our other festival release from the Highlands, Death in the Afternoon, um, seventy eight point five three, little bit to medium funk. On that, well known from that distillery. Mm, if you nice. haven't ordered seventy eight five point three, there's the funk. Okay, so how about a random? How about a very random? I just thought of at this moment, um, a very random trivia question for a fifty dollar gift card. Okay, pick up that bottle. Well, hold on, just to do what? Pick up that bottle you just had. That that one you just showed. <sighs> So death in the afternoon is an actual cocktail. What are the ingredients? Whoever answers first in the uh, in the chat gets a fifty dollars gift card. Ooh, they'll have to be the first person to show up on our end. That's show. right. Yeah. So get get googling, I guess, because no one's answered yet. I've uh, never heard of that cocktail. So oh no, you, you know, I guess so. You better know all the ingredients. It's delightful. <laughs> <laughs> uh logan is asking when the isla live stream will be uh, actually he says the isla love stream it is kind of a love stream a lot of love out there for isla that it will be wednesday oh. night 8 p.m eastern yeah callum callum wins callum callum redmond callum's back absinthe and champagne that's right so that's it yeah absinthe and champagne okay and that's how typically, it comes up on typically one one part to three parts absinthe to champagne but it's a lovely way to uh to, to spend several hours on a sunny in a sunny place did he spell them both correctly uh, yes it looked like I, think, it. I think he did yeah <laughs> i don't know you mean, the you absinthe and champagne is all coming in now you want me to go um, send him a gift card right now or are you gonna do it i can do it right now yeah go ahead man go for it um so calum will get a 50 dollar gift card um any other parting shots on, on this particular whiskey? What a lovely dram. All right. I, uh, well, we could do it just after. I mean, no big deal. Asking. 
do, do, do. Almost done. I'm putting uh, Campbelltown live stream. Oh, all right. So, Zach, yes, there is some death in the afternoon left. I believe there are at least 30 bottles or so. Um, Greg Cloyd, peyote absent in champagne. <laughs> That's a different tasting altogether. Um, total releases tomorrow is one. Mm -hmm. Just one singular release, the, the whiskey that we're trying right now. It'll be released at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um, yeah. Scott, what else? What, what 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 else? What do you want? What do you need, man? Nothing. <laughs> I've had about I've somehow had like four drams <laughs> of, this, of this lovely little whiskey, even though you only sent me like a two ounce sample. <laughs> somehow it, it just you know. I just realized that, but if you hosted the tasting, you must have your own bottle on the, the home or somewhere. I don't. I don't. We had very thirsty attendees. Oh, no. And they drained everything. <laughs> um, oh, you know what I also opened uh, at, at World Whiskey Day, because it was World Whiskey Day, was an archive bottling. So I actually don't have the bottle with me. It's still at my apartment where it might stay. Um, if, if everyone recalls, we did, Scott and I actually did a, a, a distillery dive tasting from Distillery 80, and we tried... I believe 80.262728. So those three casks, all from Distillery 80, we'll just say it, it's Glen Spey Distillery. One that uh, you very rarely see over here. Um, so I brought an archive bottling, which means it's the very first iteration of our packaging from the society. And um, this was cask 80.3. Um, so just a third cask that we released from that distillery. And boy, was it lovely. So it was a 20-year-old expression, um, distilled in 80, 1984, released to the society in 1994. So that was you know, some of the first whiskey that the American chapter ever released. And, um, and I got my hands on a bottle. So nice. Yeah, it was a really fun, like, you know, um, a fun little surprise for everybody and I was really excited to see how well it held up and God, gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. So Connor Cooney says, what would you guys recommend this pairs with? If you're talking about food, I can picture a nice grilled pork chop and some garlic mashed potatoes with this one. Oh, okay. What do you think? Yeah, sure. Oysters you Rockefeller. Ooh. Something like that. Like when you take a, a beautiful oyster, East Coast preferably. Wow. Deep fry it, sprinkle some bacon or something on it. Wow. That'd be very good. That makes me feel mundane for the grilled pork yeah. top. <laughs> Oyster and kill it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Oyster's Rockefeller. I mean, that's, you know, it's like Clam's Casino. Yeah. If you don't want to have it raw, you just do it like that. And, you know, you're sprinkling in some, typically some, some bacon and other things, which is a lot of fun. People don't want raw oysters. Huh? Haggis nachos from Campbelltown. Greg, Greg says, "Oh my goodness, <laughs> yes." I is it the Black Dog Pub that, that serves those, Greg? It, or, I forget. I forget the name of it. So in 2019, Ben, myself, and you and Campbell took a 24-hour road trip, fear and loathing on the Kintyre Peninsula, um, and uh, we we had quite a time. Uh, we had quite a time there. So we we left Edinburgh at like five o'clock in the morning by two o'clock in the afternoon, stumbling out of Cadenhead. It was at least I was stumbling. Um, <laughs> it was, it, that was that was the first half of the day. So yeah, the, the Haggits nachos um, uh, are uh, are are quite quite amazing at that point. And, I mean, what a what a beautiful place! What a great drive from Edinburgh. You don't spend too much time on the highway. It's mostly through country roads. You go over some mountains and then you just hit the coast and you know, you're in a really special place. So nice. Black sheep. That's it. Black sheep. Not the black dog. Stupid. Black sheep. <laughs> yep. So uh, yeah, it's right down, right down on the, on the water, right on the docks. All right. And then, well, and then, and then we, uh, sorry, I'm just reminiscing now. Yo, then we, sat on a, we sat on a park bench, like a, like a bunch of homeless people and drank almost an entire bottle of uh, 93 
93.114, I want to say, which was an uh, American exclusive release. Um, ah, good times. Good times. Yeah. Maybe it's good when it when you, when you reminisce like that and you're just that, that sigh of it just comes out where you're just like ah, yeah I remember that that was awesome <laughs> to many many more uh, yeah opportunities you bet all right well I think um, we've closed wrapped this one up so again available 1 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow and uh, thanks to everybody that tuned in appreciate it good showing. Good comments, good questions, good trivia. Man. And remember, Scotch Malt Salt, Scotch Malt Society, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Whiskies, I'm getting tongue tied, are not for swigging, glugging, or knocking back. Please drink responsibly. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. <laughs>